Hello Hema friends and welcome to this new video. Today I'm going to review for you the Sigi Arming Sword. So as you probably know, I received this arming sword some months ago, so I had uh, time to test it and play with it a little bit. Um, let's start from the safety, which is uh, generally speaking now the uh, quality review first. And uh, it is one of the most important while talking about our practice. So, the standard of safety for this arming sword is the one, of course, of SIGI. But you have to consider that this is a relatively, uh, I would say, quite short weapon compared to a standard feather or the SIGI king or whatever. So, a two handed sword in general. And uh, this, of course, reflects um, this aspect on uh, its uh, flexibility. So, the weapon is uh, still flexible, but compared to like a feather, simply because it is quite longer, its blade is longer, it is slightly lesser flexible. So it is safe, but the flexion starts a little bit later. So you have to press your thrust a little bit more against your opponent to start it, the flex of this weapon. And so I, it is also why I would suggest you to my, by my point of view, at least, avoid using any uh, rubber tip or whatever, because in this way the uh, tip slides aside when it uh, hits the opponent mask, instead of stopping and like bending the opponent head backward or stuff like that. When you hit the torso, um, in general speaking, when you are thrusting instead, simply because there is more stability in the torso and it is far wider and it weights more. There is not any kind of problem in thrusting. The flex starts uh, relatively easily. Uh, I will suggest you to use, um, well, I, I always use it anyway, but I will suggest you to use a plastic uh, plastron underneath your jacket when you are fencing with this kind of sword. But that said, it is uh, far safer than any other arming sword I ever used, so I am really satisfied by its safety. So, of course, here I was mainly talking about thrusting, so what about cutting instead? Now, while cutting, this is something related to, generally speaking, every single arming sword or, in general, one-handed weapons. But arming sword in the specific, because of the way they are moved in your hand or whatever, they are dynamic basically, uh, it may sometimes hit relatively hard. I will say I use the word relatively because of a clear motivation, so it's not too much, uh, of course. It's uh, safe enough for sparring and uh, like hard sparring too. But when it hits on certain targets, like the forearm for example, it can hit quite hard sometimes. So it is important to wear forearm protections, like uh, for example my uh, sparring gloves have their own uh, cuff, but if you use other gloves which doesn't have uh, any kind of cuff, it is better to use it uh, with this kind of sword, but like this is, again, it is general for every kind of army sword in my experience. Other than that, our HEMA equipment works perfectly fine with this kind of sword, it's uh, uh, enough and uh, so again I am uh, uh, satisfied by the safety level of this arming sword. So and here I want to start talking about its dynamic. Now as I mentioned before many arming swords tend to hit hard. Why? Simply because of their dynamic and the way in which you use it. But also because of uh, how they are structured basically. So the, the weight of uh, this weapon is uh, slightly forward in a sense that you uh, it's not too much forward so it's an agile weapon and uh, I'm super happy about it but it's enough it's forward enough so that it feels like a real arming sword basically. So it is safe enough and realistic enough. Uh, it, it's a good balancing in the stems. Because you have to know that because swords are weapon, the weapons, the more um, a replica is realistic, the lesser safe it is, and vice versa. Okay, so that's always true. Because uh, the more it is closer to a real sword, 
the higher the chances are that this thing will uh, hurt you or kill you. <laughs> so instead, this one, as I mentioned before, is quite safe, but still the important parts of, um, let's say, realism are here, which uh, the most important one, in my opinion, is the weight distribution. So there is a good weight distribution, that's also why it hits, again, hard sometimes while cutting. At the same time, this is also why when you interact with the opponent, uh, when there is some kind of interaction with the opponent uh, sword, um, it feels uh, like that you can like, control the opponent's sword, either with uh, beatings or with binding also. Um, because it is uh, shorter than a feather, for example, your binding actions feels uh, better simply because there is not a lot of flex which goes against your efforts. So you don't have to be like super duper precise in directing the, the edge in the precise, hyper precise angle. You can just uh, direct more or less the edge in the correct way and it's fine. And that's very good about this sword. So binding is very good. This is something which I really appreciate. So in relation to this, I want to mention that I've seen that like Sigi now made another arming sword, which is like a, a light version of this arming sword. So more, uh, I, will, I will call it like a one-ended uh, feather shirt, basically. Uh, what, what I suspect, I didn't try it, uh, still, but what I suspect is that uh, this one is more on the realistic side of the weapon. On the other version, you're pushing a little bit more in terms of safety. Um, I would say without trying that one, that I prefer this one against the other. Uh, but uh, of course, I'm not sure about it. Anyway, about dynamics, how this weapon moves. I am super duper happy. This is my favorite aiming sword that I own. So, good safety, good handling qualities and dynamics. What about its price? Now, uh, prices have changed. You can check them on... Uh, uh, I will stop saying the prices in the video because like prices keep changing these days for everything, basically. Um, so I will not say any kind of price because maybe in two, three months you will see this video and it will be a different price and you will say, oh, but Federico said, no. Um, check the price on the website. The important thing is that this is on the cheap side of the weapons, of the swords that you can find on the SIGI uh, website. Um, which is something I tend to really appreciate. So, so if you want to buy, for example, a number of arming swords for your club and uh, you do not want to go for the cheapest option possible because you also know that probably you will not receive a very good uh, tool in exchange for that money and instead you want to go toward more quality, this is a very good compromise because, uh, again, on the SIGI, um, website is on the cheap side of uh, training weapons. It is still pricey compared to other aiming sword that you find around, but is uh, the best aiming sword in terms of uh, uh, price to quality that you can find around, in my understanding at least, with considering the one I tried for now. So it's on the pricing side, it's not good, it's very good. So it's a very competitive price for this kind of tool. Also, if it is as a study, because of course I own it since three months, if it is as sturdy as other SIGIs, it also endures in time. So that's another pros. So you pay a relatively cheap price for a quite long durability which is very good. So, like, good dynamics, uh, very good pricing, uh, everything, you know, a lot of positive sides. You have to pay these with something else. And, of course, you pay it with its shape. I mean, 
I like simple things, you know, I like, I like simple styles. Uh, so I tend to like this, uh, this sword too. But of course, it's far from being one of my favorite uh, training swords that I own. Simply because like this is the one-on-one uh, sword shape, right? Uh, if you ask a kid to draw a sword, he would probably draw something like this. And um, it makes sense. I mean, uh, this is actually in terms of design. If you want to make something cheap and you still can keep a very good dynamic, this is the best way to go. And uh, of course, you have a very, very simple design. So if you want a, a cooler weapon, there is the Sigi Queen, which is a, a, a Sigi arming sword with a, a cooler shape. It's like the Sigi King, of course, of uh, the arming swords. So if you want something cool, you go uh, you know, on that uh, way, you choose that product. If you want something uh, quite cheaper and uh, as safe, most probably as the other one and uh, with uh, similar qualities, etc., etc., you go for this one. Simple, uh, very simple design. It's not something that you look at it and it's like, oh my God, it's my favorite sword. It's like, uh, it's a training tool which is what it is meant to be from the very beginning. And it is nothing more than that. So, if uh, you want something which is like a study uh, with uh, a dynamic which feels like a, a realistic arming sword, um, you want something which handles pretty well and it is uh, quite safe, I will say, this is the arming sword for you. Also, I want to mention again, this is a good uh, option for a club which want to start practicing arming sword uh, because of the qualities I already mentioned. Competitive price, safety, which is very good for clubs, etc. So, uh, I think I've told anything necessary about this weapon. I hope you will find this review useful in some ways. Thanks for watching as always. And remember that if you want to support me and the channel, there is my Patreon page. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching as always and uh, see you next time.